Good afternoon. This is story time with Mother Earth on this beautiful sunny Tuesday. I'm so happy you're here to join me. As you start tuning in, please type in the comments and let me know that you're here. I want to know who I'm reading to today. So I hope that some of you joined me on Thursday. We did a super fun craft time. We made butterflies and flowers out of coffee filters markers and a little bit of water and some pipe cleaners too so we made these beautiful butterflies i even made some after we finished the video so these are my beautiful butterflies i think i'm going to put a magnet on them and put them on my refrigerator isn't that fun so these are my beautiful butterflies I'm showing you guys what we made last week while we wait for our friends to tune in for story time. I made three butterflies. I love this one because he's really colorful and it kind of looks like tie-dye. And then I also made these fun flowers and I actually put them in a vase and it's sitting in my kitchen. So if you made butterflies and flowers last week, I would love for you to take a picture and post it in the comments and show me. I know some of you experimented with different types of paper and that may or may not have worked, but if you had to get inventive at your house, let me know what you tried um, and let me know how it worked. I would love to know what you did. Hi, Miss Holly. Um, well, we're gonna wait just another couple of seconds for people to tune in. Um, I hope you'll join me on Thursday. We're going to be um, doing another fun craft that my friend Caroline told me about and it's called nature painting. So we're gonna find things in our backyard and around the park and we're going to create our own paint brushes and see what kind of patterns they make on our paper. It could be twigs, leaves, flowers, whatever you find, we're going to make our own paint brushes and paint with them. It will be so fun to see the shapes and patterns that nature can create. So if you're just tuning in, Type in the comments and let me know that you're here. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on story time. Okay, so we're reading today, Where Does the Garbage Go? And I wanted to read this book because my dog, Hank, who you have all got to meet, and he's sitting next to me. I'll show you. Um, Hank can say hi when we're done with our video. But Hank loves to look out of the window and watch the garbage trucks and the recycling trucks go by. And I'm sure some of you do too. But when all of that's done, um, we need to know what happens to it and where does it go? Hi, Oliver, I'm so glad you're joining us for story time. Do you love garbage trucks? I know that they're so fun to watch and it's so interesting to find out where they're going. So let's get started. Where Does the Garbage Go? by Paul Showers. He's the author. That means he wrote the book. Now this is kind of a big kid book, so you're going to have to put your big kid listening ears on, okay? We're going to learn lots of different exciting things. In school, we are learning about garbage. Last week, our teacher told us about the way things used to be. Hmm, do you think it used to be better or worse? Let's find out. So she wrote on the board, garbage. Where does it come from? Where does it go? She said there was a time when people who wanted to get rid of something just threw it into the garbage can. They threw in garbage like orange peels, chicken bones, the food they didn't eat. They threw in trash too. Empty bottles, tin cans, cardboard boxes, and old newspapers. Hi Kat and Callan and Lena, we're reading about where garbage goes. When you put garbage and trash together, you call it waste. So they used to throw everything in the same bin and it went to the same place. 
Once a week, the waste was collected in trucks and taken out to the dump. In the dump, there were piles of garbage everywhere and all kinds of trash. Old tires, broken bottles, tin cans, old newspaper, broken chairs, and sofas. Now, we learned about this when we first started doing Mother Earth. What can you do with tin cans and old newspapers instead? What can we do with tin cans and old newspapers now? In summer, the garbage rotted and made a terrible stink. Rats came to eat it. Millions of flies buzzed around. The dump was a great big mess. Today, some towns still have dumps where they leave their garbage and trash. Sounds really smelly. Ooh. Hi, Miss Lisa. At one time, New York City used to use the ocean for its dump. It loaded its waste on flat boats called barges. Tugboats pulled the barges out to sea and the waste was dumped overboard. Most of the trash sank, but some of it floated. Often it floated right back to the beaches where people were swimming. Ugh! So we also learned about litter. And litter is when you throw a piece of garbage on the ground that should otherwise go into a trash a recycling bin. But when you talk about litter on a very big scale, it's called pollution. So back when they used to dump their trash into the ocean, they were polluting the ocean. Do you think that fish and sharks and dolphins and whales like to eat trash? No, it's very bad for them. New York City doesn't throw its waste in the ocean anymore. Whew, that's good. It has a special kind of dump called a landfill. Other cities have landfills too. Our town has one and our class went out and looked at it. A landfill is a busy place. Trucks bring in loads of waste from the city and dump it in big piles. Bulldozers with scrapers spread out the waste. That's what they're doing right there. Compactors with spikes on their wheels move back and forth over the waste. The waste is smashed and piled. Hmm. So we're learning that a dump and a landfill are both places where trash go, but they're actually quite different. A dump is not cared for, and it's often very smelly and gross. But a landfill, look at all these people taking care of the landfill. Hmm, let's see what else they do. After that, trucks bring, trucks bring loads of soil. The bulldozers and compactors spread the soil over the waste. The soil covers up everything. It keeps out rats and flies. Then the landfill is ready for more waste. Then comes more soil to cover it up, then more waste and more soil, layer after layer. A landfill keeps piling up. It gets to be a little mountain. On this page, you can see the layers of the landfill. You see the layers? So it's waste, soil, waste, soil, waste, and they just keep layering it like that. When the last layer of soil is spread on top of a landfill, grass and trees are planted on it. The landfill becomes a park or a playground. Then the city has to start a new landfill. Waste never stops piling up. But what are some ways that we can reduce our waste? Can you think of some ways we can reduce our waste? We've talked about two very specific ways and we'll go over those in just a minute. So this graph right here is a, a graph is a representation of information. It can show percentages or numbers. 
It's a way to easily digest or understand a lot of information in one quick small way. So this pie chart, this graph right here, shows us all of the different things that make up our landfill. So 50% is paper, 10% plastic, 13% food and yard waste. Can anybody think of what we can do with that food and yard waste? Hmm, we learned about it a couple of weeks ago. That's right, we can compost. We can compost food and yard waste and keep 13% of the amount of trash that goes into our landfill out of the landfill. That's pretty incredible. 1% um, glass, 6% metal, 50% paper, and 60% glass. So all four of those things that we just talked about are things that can be recycled. Glass, metal, paper, and plastic. Most plastics, not all plastics can be recycled, but the hard plastics can, if you remember. And then 20% is other. So that means that those are things that can't be recycled and they can't be composted. So really, so many of the things that we're putting into our landfill are things that we could be composting or recycling instead. Wow. Some cities try to get rid of their waste by burning it. They build big furnaces called incinerators and burn garbage and trash in them. The heat is used to warm stores and offices. It is also used to make electricity. But incinerators don't get rid of everything. They simply turn the waste into ashes, and the ashes have to go to a landfill. Sometimes those ashes are toxic or harmful, and sometimes the smoke from the incinerator pollutes the air with harmful gases. Remember when we said pollute, when we were talking about dumping the trash in the ocean? So these incinerators can sometimes pollute the air. Today, cities are having a hard time finding places for new landfills. Waste keeps piling up. People keep throwing things away. They throw away too many things. Some of the things they throw away could be used over again. Each person in the United States creates about four pounds of trash every day. Four pounds, that's a lot. Many cities are now trying something that is new for them. It's called recycling. Recycling means making trash into something new instead of throwing it away. Almost half of the trash we throw away could be recycled. Look for this symbol on glass, metal, and plastic containers that can be recycled. That's the recycling symbol, and that means that you can put it in your curbside recycling bin. So wow, almost half of the things that we throw away could be recycled instead. Imagine what a huge difference that would make if everyone on the earth did that. Instead of four pounds in the landfill each day, you would only be sending two pounds. And we learned during compost week that humans produce almost one pound of organic waste a day. So if we had four pounds, we recycled two of them, and we composted one, we would only be sending one pound to the landfill instead of four. That's incredible. Our city is recycling. We still put garbage in the garbage can, orange peels, chicken bones, the food we don't eat, but we keep empty glass bottles in a separate box. Aluminum cans and foil are kept separate too. When we put the cans and bottles at the curb, we pile old newspapers beside them. We flatten our cardboard boxes and pile them next to the newspapers. So in this city, they have to separate their recyclables by the type of material that it is. So they have to separate metal from glass from paper. But in Oklahoma City, we have a system called single stream recycling. And that means you can put everything that is recyclable 
in your same bin. But we always wanna make sure that while we recycle often, we're also recycling right. And that means only putting things that should be going into your recycling bin, like hard plastics, metal, glass, and paper. When the garbage truck comes, it picks up only the garbage and it takes it to the landfill. Other trucks come for the bottles and cans and newspapers. Those things don't go to the landfill anymore. Our city sells them to factories and mills for recycling. Paper mills chop up old newspapers and turn them into new paper. Did you know you can do that? There are even ways that you can make paper at home. That would be a fun experiment to try to do. So the paper is shredded into pulp. Pulp is washed and bleached. The water is drained from the pulp. And then the water is dried out and rolled. That's pretty incredible. Aluminum factories take aluminum cans and foil and melt them into new cans and rolls of foil. So the metal cans are chopped up. The machine takes off the paint from the metal with hot air and then it's melted into molds. Wow. So they're showing how they recycle paper and how they recycle aluminum. That's pretty incredible. Let's see what else. Glass bottles are ground up and melted to make new glass bottles and jars. Did you know that glass can be heated up hot enough to be melted and made into new glass? So some, it says right here, some glass bottles are sterilized and reused. So that means they don't have to go through the recycling process. They're just cleaned and used again. Other glass bottles are crushed. The glass is melted in a furnace and then it is poured, poured into molds or blown into cool glass. Even plastic can be recycled, hard plastic. Plastic factories chop it up and turn it into things like flower pots and park benches. Wow. So the plastic is chopped up into bits, the bits are washed and dried, and then again they're poured into a mold. Let's see what that looks like. Wow, so right here we're recycling glass and plastic. Our teacher says recycling is a good start, but we must do more. We must stop making so much waste. We must stop throwing so many things away. We need to find ways to use things over and over again. So right here, they made a bulletin board with ideas for ways they can help the environment. Let's see what they came up with. We're re separating our trash and recycling. So in their family, they're recycling. We put our food scraps in the compost heap. So this family is composting. I made a toy for my dog out of an old sock. So sometimes it's nice when you need something new to find something that you already have at your house and try to make what you need rather than buy something new. My family gives all our old clothes to the thrift store so someone else can love them and wear them. I carry a lunchbox instead of a bag I throw away. That's so smart. It's nice to use reusable things for, for things like straws, water bottles, and lunch bags. We carry string bags to the store so we don't need to take the plastic ones we'd only throw away. That's another good thing to reuse, shopping bags. And remember a couple of weeks ago, when we used old t-shirts to make shopping bags, if you didn't catch that video, it's on our YouTube channel. So you can just use an old t-shirt, something that you already have to make a reusable shopping bag. My mom started a recycling program for paper at work. Let's start one here. So sometimes it takes you taking the initiative and being the leader to start a recycling program in your school or work. And it can be a lot of work, but it's really rewarding once you get it done and you get everybody on board. 
That's what we have done at home. We used to bring our groceries home in paper and plastic bags. When we emptied the bags, we threw them in the garbage can. When we did that, we were just making more waste to pile up in a landfill. We have stopped doing that. Now we, now we use string bags. They hang on the kitchen doorknob. When we go to the supermarket, we take our string bags and put our groceries in them. We never throw away our string bags. They are strong and hold a lot of groceries. We use them over and over again. So there's an important lesson there in using something over and over again rather than getting a new one every time you need something. That helps keep waste out of our own landfill. Because remember, humans produce four pounds of waste a day, but of that four pounds, two pounds is recyclable and one pound is compostable, which means you only really need to send one pound of waste to the landfill a day, and we can do everything possible in our power to even prevent that from happening. So I thank you for joining me for story time. Where does the garbage go? You, as you can see from this book, garbage and recycling pickup is a very important job. So next time you see one of your truck drivers on your street, be sure to give them a friendly wave and thank them for their hard work, especially during this time when a lot of us are staying home. They're getting out of their houses and working every day. So we thank them and we hope that you do too. Um, I hope you'll join me on Thursday for nature painting. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.